A very, very, very warm welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the C-Alpha Learning Series. Uh, this is a series that we're going to be bringing to you every alternate Thursday for the next few months with a whole range of interesting topics. Uh, we often have students coming back to us wanting to know about different aspects of the career decision-making journey, uh, how they can really begin to explore and understand various facets. And our objective really is to bring you information from various sources so that it becomes so much easier for you to go ahead and you know decide what is interesting what it is that you like to do and information that's just useful for you to have and sometimes just fun for you to have it doesn't always have to be related to something that you have to do all right super so today's session is about why you should be online um and actually just talking about that we just want to share with you that we do also have the c alpha mobile app you can see the qr code that's visible uh so if you are logging in from your desktop great or your laptop fantastic uh, but we also have the option of then just you know creating the app on your phone and going ahead and using that uh, if you have the app it's also easier for you to get like notifications of the events that are happening going forward all right so let's get started. So if you look at the world today, right, every one minute of a day, this is the kind of usage of data and online resources that's happening. All right. So Snapchat users send about 2 million Snapchats every minute. Okay. Instagram users are sharing over 65K photos every minute. Google is being used for 5.7 million searches every minute, right? So it's just mind boggling when you think about the influence that the digital world really has in our life these days. But what happens is this ends up sometimes being what we called a double-edged sword, okay? Now in studies that have been done with high schoolers and teenagers, we have mixed opinions that usually come out, right? So some feelings of a very positive interaction with the online realm, uh, it talks about students being more connected with their friends' lives, right? And I'm sure all of you feel that. Now, how many of y'all uh, feel that being online actually helps you stay in touch? Uh, you can just start typing in the chat box so it's easier for me to see. Okay, does being online help you be in touch with your friends or are you all connected anyways and you don't have to really be online to say hi, hello to everyone? Okay, super, right? And then help stay in touch, Rachel. Thank you for responding, appreciate that, right? Uh, for a lot of other people, it's sometimes an easier way to express your feelings. Now, imagine someone put you in front of a room of people and asked you to talk about something, correct? Uh, it becomes a lot more difficult for you to sometimes express. I mean, some people are comfortable with it, some people are not. But if you have a chance then maybe to create a post where you're talking about how you're feeling on a particular day, it then becomes an easier way for them to go ahead and express themselves, right? And also a sense of community. Everyone who's a part of a particular social group uh, then also feels a sense of community that is there. And, that, and those are some of the positive feelings that are associated with being online, right? But there are also a lot of negative feelings that people do talk about, correct? Um, sometimes we are often looking at validation online, correct? So when someone posts content um, or maybe you have a post, you have a picture that's put up, you are, I mean, let's be honest, all of us are waiting for those likes, for those comments, for that response, right? Otherwise, the whole feeling of, okay, why did I go ahead and post that really kind of defeats the purpose. So though there is one angle of just saying, okay, I'm going to be online to express myself. I think everyone at a certain level does ex uh, expect that validation to also come in. And that's what works sometimes positively or negatively, right? Um, and then there is this whole fantastical world that... Uh, you know, social media creates because everyone or a large number of people end up feeling that other people's lives are better than their own, correct? Uh, you could see pictures of someone on a holiday somewhere, doing something else, achieving something. And when you look at that and you look back at yourself, sometimes there are also feelings of inadequacy, correct? Uh, we also know about negative comments, trolls, all these things that kind of happen, which also creates a lot of negativity. So broadly, we're saying drama that ends up happening, correct? Or maybe 
why didn't you like my post or why didn't you comment on when I posted? Like all of these things are something that ends up happening in the digital realm. All right. But what we're trying to look at today is despite it being a double-edged sword, there are a lot of benefits to us actually looking at being online, right? Now, this could be social medium. It could be other things that you're looking at. And where is this actually being helpful for students? Now, the first thing that being online ends up doing is really encouraging creativity and innovative thinking. How does this really end up happening? I'm going to take you a, a very basic example of just going ahead and creating that post. Has anyone ever, or at least not for the most part, posted something without editing their photo, right? Uh, in the past, editors, video filmmakers, all of these were like separate entities, correct? Today, everyone's an expert, right? So everyone will go ahead, do some amount of editing, look at creating a video, look at Canva for creating stuff. So there are so many tools that are available online that students are actually using for various purposes correct which is able which is helping you uh, go ahead and perform a lot better from a creative perspective so even if you're looking at a project in school how difficult is it for you then to go ahead and click on an app start using it and create something that looks you know attractive and interesting right so a lot of creativity really stems from this and even innovative thinking why you could say oh i mean you know writing a caption is nothing so great for a post but actually it does right you are putting on your thinking hat you want to give a single small one line caption and you're trying to say how do i go ahead and capture this effectively right so this is where it brings into an aspect of really encouraging creativity and innovative thinking. And it also gives you an area to kind of explore and find out about things that you haven't really thought about before, right? So has, you know, so there is a website called Nova PBS, okay? Uh, they talk about a lot of interesting ideas in terms of things that are happening around the world, okay? Saving Venice. Now, we all know that because of global warming, the water levels are increasing around the world. And we also know that Venice is one of these cities which is slowly going to disappear in the next few years, correct? But here is a, a website where they're saying, how can you actually go about putting on your thinking hat and thinking of ways to save Venice, right? How would a sunken ship rescue occur, correct? If you're looking at a super tunnel, how does this go about being built? Now, students, when you're looking at information online, of course, I know uh, when we're looking at, say, Instagram or Snapchat, we're mostly connected with our friends. Uh, and then we're kind of following them and they're following us. But there is also a lot of influencers that you can follow, a lot of different information that you can really source which actually gets your creative juices flowing okay because sometimes unless and until you're exposed to a new idea you may or may not know that something exists right so the advantage then of looking at this and the best part about being online is also I mean I mean best or worst also you can look at it both ways but everything that we do is tracked correct uh, every search that you uh, type in is being picked up by some data points at the other end correct so what happens is let's just take instagram for instance let's talk about maybe you liked some psychology posts you lo looked at three four different psychology posts the algorithm then understands that okay this two person is interested in psychology so it starts showing you more and more related content correct uh, so the important thing is when you are looking at browsing online you are also able to find more related content to your interest areas correct and you're able to find content with absolutely unrelated areas which also helps you broaden your horizons the next thing it comes into is helping critical thinking and assessment now what do i mean by critical thinking and assessment now essentially what happens is Let's just take, okay, well, how, how do you normally search for information? Let's imagine, and I'd love to hear in the chat box, let's imagine that you want to get information about any topic. What is the first thing that you end up doing? Can someone put it in the chat box? Any topic that you want to get information about, what is the first thing that most people end up doing? Super, Rachel. Yes. Yeah. The first thing that we end up doing is typing it in Google, right? You do a Google search. When you do a Google search, then 
there is going to be a vast amount of information and results that end up coming, right? Now, the sensible thing and the thing that it's important for students to learn is don't just pick the first result and go with that, right? You have to actually, if you're looking at information on a particular topic, it makes a lot of sense to start looking at various links that are available based on that and start comparing the information that's available in these links, correct? Because like we know, there is, I mean, there's no limitation on who can post information on the internet, right? So it's always important to look for verified sources when you're searching for information, it's always helpful to go ahead and compare information on various. So this actually, in a way, boosts your own critical thinking and assessment skills, right? You have to go ahead and understand, okay, this could be something that has some amount of information, but it may or may not be 100% accurate, right? And when you're able to look at this on different resources, that's when it helps you really understand, that, oh, hey, you know what, I can actually figure out that this is what it really means, correct? So it helps you with your critical thinking right now maybe it also helps you think about absolutely inane things why do people say the moon is full of cheese right why do dogs scratch their beds before laying down so like i said everything doesn't have to be about what you're studying at that point of time correct but the important thing is it makes you think right why did pizza become as popular as it is wherever you go in the world there is pizza available correct how old is too old for trick-or-treating okay now these could be the most inane questions that are there or maybe the really big questions in life it really depends on on your perspective but this is where we're saying that go ahead and explore put on your thinking hats and look at how you can critically think about a whole bunch of different areas correct the future when we look at it requires people who are not literally doing a copy paste job right you need to put on your creative hat you need to put on your problem solving hat you need to look at creative inputs critical thinking because this is where you are going to be differentiated from say a machine that can that just follows instructions correct how can you really think out of the box how can you really go ahead and bring in additional value and listen until your own mind is really expanded you know when i i i mean so lucky for you all right now when we were younger there was absolutely no online resources available, right? Either you had to go to a library to get some books. And I remember when I was young, there used to be these books called the Tell Me Why series, okay? And then the Encyclopedia. So these would basically come to us like we had kind of ordered for this subscription. And every month I would get one book on different topics. And I used to wait for that because that used to be my only peak or window into the outside world, right? So right now, the fact is that you guys have so much of information at source, right? So it really would be helpful for you to go ahead and start exploring and using this stuff, all right? Another thing that being online can be really useful for is networking. Now, often students are going to be like, why do I really need to network? I'm a student. I'm not looking at that. The thing is that you have to really go ahead and start building a presence in the online world. I'm just going to quickly show you an example. Now, if any of y'all um, were to probably, where can I get this? Give me a second. All right. Have any of you tried Googling your name? Uh, can you guys, I mean, do you have your phones accessible right now? Can you go ahead and Google your name? Right. So I'm going to do that too. I'm going to type my name out and I am going to search right now because i have actually begun working on my online presence when you actually go and type the name into the search bar you are going to see a whole bunch of information related to what i've done the work that i do of course other people too but you see that it's present correct so imagine uh, an employer or uh, you know an admissions officer from a college who's looking to understand more about the student when uh, there's no way that they can access you directly correct so google like we already said becomes that point of search right and that's where you are going to become visible Right. So which is why it's important for you to also begin and understand what kind of online presence you want to have. And it's also very, very important. There are stories that we've heard of students who have been revoked their admission because of the way they have portrayed themselves online. Right. So it's very important to be mindful of what kind of an online presence or brand you're creating for yourself and to kind of really think about how you want to structure that. All right. So the first thing to do, I don't know. Uh, can you just show me a raise of hands? Do any of y'all here in the room today have a LinkedIn account? Any of the students? 
Rachel has a, uh, an account. Great. Um, and I have who else? Hold on. So Sanjana has an, uh, a LinkedIn account. Rachel has a LinkedIn account. Superb. So we do have a few people who have LinkedIn accounts, right? So for the rest of y'all who don't, do go ahead and sign up and start creating information or start creating an online presence for yourself, right? So it's very simple. You just need a very usual email address, password. You put that in. Uh, you're going to be putting up a photograph of yourself, some basic information about yourself, right? And the reason something like this is useful is because LinkedIn is a professional network where there is a plethora of resources available, right? You can join groups that you're interested in. Let's talk about various kind of career-related groups. Maybe you are thinking about different career options you're not sure which ones you like or don't it's a good way to kind of be a part of a group and get more information right uh, you can basically look at uh, volunteering opportunities that are available online uh, you can look for internship opportunities or maybe projects and events that you want to contribute to correct so what you need to really look at doing is one create your linkedin account and two for the first couple of weeks or months just go ahead and observe right because i mean all of us are on our phones most of the time Time. So just like you kind of click on your Insta or Facebook or Snapchat or whatever that you're looking at the rest of the time, start getting onto LinkedIn also a little more regularly and you'll be able to identify and look at some options. Uh, of different kinds of posts that people are putting, maybe follow other students, so you know, what kind of information is going out. But it's just basic information about yourself, right? Maybe you participated in an event at school, maybe you won a certificate for something, maybe you wrote an essay on a particular topic, and you can go ahead and even post something like that, right? So go ahead. And even if you're posting once a month, you don't have to really go ahead and create a lot of active content. But you it helps to build your online presence when you do something like that, correct? And by the time you come to a point where maybe you're looking for an internship, maybe you're looking for some kind of experience, uh, this will be a useful network for you to actually get in touch with the professional community. All right. And the most important thing, guys, is while we do talk about social media, it's also very, very important that each and every one of you has to stay safe online. OK, um, it's, it's a very simple example. Just think about a cucumber, right? Cucumber is a green, it's healthy. And if you eat a cucumber, it's a salad. So it's going to be healthy for your system, right? So everyone knows that a cucumber is going to be healthy. If you eat one cucumber or maybe two cucumbers, that is healthy. Imagine if you eat 20 or 30 or 40 cucumbers, it is going to have a negative effect on your body, right? And that's really the key with a lot of things in life. Moderation is key, correct? Whatever you do, do it in the right amount. And that's when you're going to be able to get the benefit out of it. If you overdo it, you are going to go ahead and have some kind of a negative, even if it's a positive thing like a cucumber, too much of anything can actually have a negative impact of your body all right so you really need to look at ways to understand and stay safe online right never share personal information when i say personal information i'm talking about your phone number your home address uh, maybe information your aadhaar card pan card school id any of this information right uh, even go to the extent where you're saying don't you don't want other people to know personal information about yourself of course your name's going to be there and a lot of students also choose to use aliases so that's of course up to you but make sure there's no personal information of yours available online make sure all your um, you know apps and platforms are constantly updated right they are always installing security features so make sure that's always done all right and at a huge level for you to go ahead and be safe and a lot of times I have students who say that their accounts are not private okay you have to have to have to make any online account that you create private and this is of paramount importance right you may choose to add other people as friends and let that be your choice but don't let your information be accessible publicly which can then be used in a negative manner against you okay uh, so how many of y'all have your you know accounts set on private setting? Do you want to just type that quickly in the chat box? Do any of y'all have your accounts set on private setting? Okay, Bhavya saying yes. That's great, Bhavya. Rachel too, superb. 
Sanjana too. Great. So it's good to see that some of you all are aware about this. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to quickly take you all through a quiz. I hope you guys have your phones. Um, can you see the QR code on my screen right now? Okay, super. If you have your phone, quickly go ahead and scan this QR code. Okay, and then I'm going to go, go ahead and do a quick quiz on safety. So we'll just know where we're at. Okay, super. You should be uh, able to uh, ask, see the app asking you for your name right now. So just go ahead and type in your name. Great. Anyone else wants to join in? Super. Okay, I'll just give it a couple of more seconds and then we'll go to the next section. All righty. So here comes your first question. Go ahead and pick the right answer. Okay, great. So here, okay, then we're going to go to the next section, right? So catfishing is going fishing along with your cat, yeah, <laughs> of course. But basically, <coughs> sorry, people go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> right? People sometimes create fake accounts online, okay? And this is basically something that maybe there is an old person who's trying to create an account of a teenager, or maybe there is another person who's trying to create a fake account like someone else, right? So catfishing is basically the process of luring someone into a conversation by creating these fake accounts, all right? Superb, some of y'all have gotten that right. So, oh, Bhavya, super. Bhavya answered the quickest and followed by Rachel and Vidhi, all right. This is the next question. All right, so this is absolutely clear. We do have someone saying, I don't think it's important. I would request you to think that it's important because uh, online privacy is really something that will keep you safe from a lot of negativity that can really come out of it, all right? So Bhavya is still in the lead, followed by Rachel and Vidhi. Superb. And then the third question. <clears throat> Fantastic. Everyone got this right, right? So ideally, ignore the cyber bullies. And if it continues after being ignored for a while, then it really makes sense to get some help, all right? Super, Bhavya. I mean, Rachel, congratulations. So Rachel is the winner of this competition, followed by Bhavya. So uh, Rachel and Bhavya, uh, Ramona is with us in the room today. So please do go ahead and share your email address with her on a direct message. You can just uh, pick Ramona in the chat and send it to her. And you will be having a prize coming your way soon. Great, guys. Really happy with this. All right, just going to continue. Right. And then one of the most important things that one can do when they're online is really exploring and understanding and just, you know, exposing yourself to a completely different world. Right. And educational resources. There are so many things that you can do. Now, I'm sure your counselors in your school have already spoken to you about various kinds of competitions. Everyone participates in a MUN or maybe an Olympiad. So these are things that everyone commonly does know about and schools also go ahead and do. Uh, but they're also whole bunch of different kinds of resources. Now, this is basically the Smithsonian Museum, okay? And they have something called the Smithsonian Open Access, where you can really talk about some absolutely unique things, right? They have a 3D Voyager, they have a learning lab where you can actually, you know, create different kinds of projects, right? Uh, they have the Smithsonian Figshare and different kinds of artworks, music, design. So there are a whole plethora of avenues for you to really explore. And 
For students who really are in grade 9 and 10 and 11, this is that time where you really need to kind of, you know, spread your wings and learn as much about different things as you can. And it can be, when I say learn, it can be purely from a hobby perspective, from an interest perspective. Everything doesn't have to be something that you're relating to what you're going to choose for a career. But as you start exploring different avenues, you will begin to enjoy some things more than others. And that then becomes a good indicator for you to decide, hmm, okay, maybe this is something that I can look at as a career option for myself, right? Uh, there are also a whole bunch of different kinds of resources. Uh, there are the Young Leaders for Active Citizenship. This helps students who are looking at policy change, Brainscape, Howcast, Khan Academy. So these are different resources that are available, which helps you with the entire entire educational uh, resource angle and the exploration angle. And of course, chat GP, you know, I just want to kind of bring it in quickly here. It is a resource. Everyone ends up using it. But the biggest issue that schools, uh, universities are all facing with this is the whole component of plagiarism, right? You can just type in any single question that you want in chat GPT and you're going to get a ready response. You can get an essay, you can get notes, you can get everything absolutely prepared, right? My recommendation to you when you have an assignment at school, okay, don't go ahead and type the question into chat GPT because that's when it's going to be plagiarized. It's going to be something that's copy pasted and that you can see in multiple reports or essays that the other students are submitting, correct? Spend some time and think about what you would want to write about that topic, correct? So whatever the topic is, spend some time, think about it, and you put down at least 10, 20, 30 lines in terms of what you think about that specific topic. Then you can take that content and then insert that into chat GPT so that it can do more of a cleanup, a fine tuning, maybe make suggestions in that part, correct? So in that sense, what happens is the content is really your own, right? You are the one who's actually creating this content and you are the one who is just using this as a tool then to improvise your content, correct? But that means that your content then is not plagiarized, okay? Uh, if you're looking at volunteering options, there are different kinds of organizations like the UN Volunteers, Habitat for Humanity, CRY, or if you're looking for like subject-based interests, right? Uh, Pi Circle is, a, you know, a, a math circuit where this is a, a global competition that happens. Students can take part in these competitions that happen at regular intervals and you get ranked on a leaderboard and then you can basically test your math skills. Harvard and MIT have a math tournament, right? There is a robotics contest. Uh, if you're looking at design, there's Doodle for Google. So there are a whole bunch of resources, guys, that are really available. And that's really another reason why you should go ahead and use these online resources effectively. Okay, um, I just wanted to mention, uh, we do have our Cialfo uh, Instagram page. Uh, this is the QR code if you want to go ahead and scan it. Um, if any of you would like to receive the links that we've shared today or the things that we've talking, spoken about, uh, please do send us a DM saying links and we will go ahead and uh, send these links to you, correct? So I have a lot more resources. I mean, it's just 30 minutes that we have today, so I really can't go into every single thing, but happy to share resources with you guys so that it will be useful for you to go ahead in the future, all right? And we also have to close with something that we're calling the Instagram contest. Now, um, so like we said, Cialfo HQ is our Instagram page, uh, and you can see this post here, the Cialfo Learning Series, this particular one. Uh, this is a series that you're attending today and that you're a part of. Uh, so if you'd like, you can go ahead and comment on this post. You can tag five friends, okay, and ask them to follow Cialfo HQ too. And once they do, just DM us saying tagged. And we again have a surprise gift for you waiting at the end of that. All right. So really happy to have you all join us here today. Like I said, if you'd like to receive uh, links to different kinds of resources that you can use online, we're really, really happy to share that with you. Just send us a DM saying links and we'll go ahead. And we are going to be back on the 12th of October with the next session, which is talking about subject selection. So those of you who are at that point where you feel you would be helpful, would be helpful to get guidance on, you know, what are the important things to consider or what are the things you shouldn't do while you're selecting your subjects, do join in for the next session on October 12th. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you did have a good session and we look forward to seeing you next week.